In this video, you're going to learn about the discriminant and how to find out whether a quadratic equation has two solutions, one solution, no solution, and whether they're real, imaginary, and even whether they're rational or irrational. So first of all, what exactly is the discriminant? Well, you're probably already familiar with quadratic equations. These are equations that are in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And you probably also learned about the quadratic formula. And what the quadratic formula does is it allows us to solve for these values of x that make this equation equal to zero. Now graphically, what a quadratic is, is it's a parabola when you graph it. And when that parabola crosses the x-axis, those are what are referred to as the zeros. It's what makes this equation equal to zero. So you could have a parabola that crosses at two points on the x-axis, one point, or not at all. And so that's what the discriminant allows us to do. So the discriminant is just this part here that's underneath the square root in the quadratic formula. It's the b squared minus 4ac. And if it comes out to a positive number, meaning it's greater than zero, then we say that there's two real solutions, meaning it crosses the x-axis at two points. If it's equal to zero, then we say that there's one real solution, meaning it crosses right at the vertex. So just one answer to this equation. And if it's less than zero, meaning that it comes out to a negative number, then we get zero real solutions, meaning that the parabola either opens up or opens down, but it doesn't cross the x-axis. So there's no real solutions. You actually get two complex solutions, or you could say two imaginary solutions. Now, a bonus I put here is that if the discriminant comes out to a perfect square like um, 36 or 49, then what will happen is you'll get two real solutions, but those solutions will be rational uh, as opposed to if it's not a perfect square, it would be irrational. So that's kind of like a bonus there. Let's do three examples, and then I've got a fourth example that's more challenging. So if these ones are easy, go ahead and skip to that fourth question. So in number one, we have 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. We want to find out you know, what, how many solutions are there and what are the solutions? Are they real, imaginary? How many are there? So the first thing we want to identify is the A value, the B value, and the C value. Okay, and you want to make sure everything's on one side and it's set equal to zero. Then we're going to substitute it into our discriminant, the b squared minus 4ac. So let's go ahead and do that. b squared minus 4ac. You want to make sure you capture the sign, whether it's positive or negative. So b is negative 3, negative 3 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 1. So this comes out to negative 3 squared, which is 9, minus 4 times 2 times 1, which is 8. So that's coming out to 1. Now what the one means, it doesn't mean that there's one solution. The one, it's positive, meaning it's greater than zero. So that's this case right here. There's going to be two real solutions. And because one is a perfect square, you're going to actually have two rational, meaning like it's a, you can written as a ratio of an integer divided by an integer. So we get two real, or you could say two rational solutions. And the parabola would look something like this, where it crosses the x-axis twice. For number two, what do you think for this one? Well, this one's a little bit more challenging because it's not in this form where it's equal to zero. So what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to subtract the eight from both sides of the equation to put it into that standard form. Now we can identify our a value, which is negative one, our b value, which is positive five, and our c value, which is negative eight. And let's go ahead and put it into the discriminant, b squared minus four ac. And that's going to be, uh, let's see, 5 squared, which is 25, minus 4 times a, which is negative 1, times c, which is negative 8. And here we're getting 25 uh, minus, let's see, this is a 32. Now, sometimes you have to be careful with the signs. See, I'll have a negative 4 times a negative 1 times a negative 8. An odd number of negatives is going to be a negative. And if I had an even number of negatives, that's going to be a positive or plus. So this comes out to negative 7. And because negative seven is less than zero, that tells us that we're actually gonna have uh, two complex solutions, or you could say two imaginary solutions, or you could say there's no real solutions. And your parabola would look something like this, where it doesn't cross the x-axis. So we'll just say two imaginary solutions for this one. Okay, now you might be saying uh, to yourself, Mario, you know, why does this work? Like, why are there two real, or one real, or no real? Why does the discriminant work the way that it does? Well, if you look at the quadratic formula, which you usually learn before you learn the discriminant, you'll notice that this 
quantity underneath the square root. Imagine if this came out to a negative number, right? If you go to take the square root of a negative number, you really can't do that. You get an imaginary number, right? What number times itself is a negative number? Well, it's not a real number, right? Now, if this comes out to zero, see, the square root of zero is just zero, and if you do negative b plus zero or negative b minus zero, since zero is really like nothing, you're really just getting that one solution, the negative b over 2a. And then the last uh, case is if this is positive, then of course when you take a square root of a positive number, you're gonna get a positive number, and it's gonna be negative b plus that quantity or negative b minus that quantity, and you're getting those two solutions. So that's why it works, but it's basically a shortcut to figure out how many solutions that you have and uh, whether they're real, imaginary, et cetera. So for number three, what do you think for this one? We've got 4x squared equals 12x minus nine. If you're saying we need to get into this form, you're absolutely right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to move the 12x to the other side or subtract 12x from both sides. I'm gonna add nine to both sides and equal to zero. Now remember, whenever you move something from one side to the other, um, the sign changes to the opposite. Now we've got our a, b, and c value. And let's go ahead and put that into our discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. So negative 12 squared is a positive 144, a is 4, and c is 9. 4 times 4 times 9 is 144, so we have 144 minus 144, which is 0. Now don't get confused, you might say, oh, there are zero solutions. No, when the discriminant's equal to zero, that means that you have one real solution. It would look something like this, where it crosses the x-axis just at one point at the vertex. So we're gonna say uh, one real. Okay, before we jump into number four, which is a little bit more challenging problem, if you're new to the channel and we haven't met yet, my name is Mario of Mario's Math Tutoring. And this channel is all about making learning math less stressful so you can raise your grade, pass your class, and go on to pursue your dreams. So that's what we're all about here. If you're interested, check out more of my videos. But let's jump into number four. It says, find a value for C such that the quadratic equation, 3x squared minus 2x plus C is equal to zero, has two imaginary solutions, or what would C be if it had two real solutions, or what would C be if it had one real solution? So we have to do a little bit of work on this one. You can see the A value is three, the B value is negative two, and we don't know what C is. So what we wanna do, if we wanna find out if there's gonna be two imaginary solutions, that's when the discriminant, B squared minus 4AC, is less than zero. So let's go ahead and write an inequality We've got b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. b squared is negative two squared, which is four, minus four times a, which is three, times c, which we don't know. And that whole thing has to be less than zero or negative. So we have four minus 12c is less than zero. We subtract four from both sides. That gives us negative 12c is less than negative four. And if we divide the whole thing by negative 12, c is gonna be greater than one-third, because remember when you divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, that inequality sign is going to flip or change directions. So as long as c is greater than one-third, it could be one or two or 10, as long as it's greater than one-third, then you're gonna have two imaginary solutions. The parabola would look like this, where it doesn't cross the x-axis. Okay, for a letter b though, two real solutions. Well, two real solutions means that this scenario here, it has, the discriminant has to be greater than zero. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero. So that's gonna be four minus four times three times c is greater than zero. And so that comes out to four minus 12c is greater than zero. If we subtract four from both sides and divide by negative 12, you can see that c would then be less than one third. Again, because we divide it by a negative, the inequality sign flips. So two imaginary is greater than one third, two real, it's less than one third. What do you think one real would be? Well, let's set up that our equation here, b squared minus four ac, when it's equal to zero, there's one real, so equal to zero. So again, we have four minus 12c, because see, all these values are the same. And if we subtract four from both sides, and divide by negative 12, you can see that C is exactly equal to one third. So if you want to review actually finding not just how, how many solutions there are, but what exactly are the locations of these x-intercepts, then you wanna use the entire quadratic formula. And I talk about that in that video right there. So I'll see you over in that video.